Mark, with so many of your former players in the Olympics, especially this Wednesday with the gold medal game, how do you watch that game? Or do you watch that game? Is, is there a rooting interest, or do you just kind of hope everybody does well? Well, obviously you want everybody to do well, but unfortunately you know, only one team's going to end up winning the game. Uh, I hope it ends in regulation or overtime and they don't have to go into a shootout like uh, last time around. But uh, I watch it uh, like any other fan. Obviously we've got a vested interest with so many different Badger players playing on both squads. Uh, you want them to play well. Uh, I think the fans will enjoy it just because uh, you have two of the you know, best teams in the world playing against each other and the stakes are obviously very high. This is what they've prepared themselves for for four years. And so uh, emotions have to be uh, controlled and uh, both teams want to play their best game of the, of the year and of the Olympics. And if they're able to do that, then the fans are the ones that are going to get treated to a special event. You always, I'm sorry, you've always talked about the importance of growing the game. How important is it that you know so many eyes are going to be on both of these teams with so many Wisconsin ties? Well, I mean, if you look back on history, every time uh, the Olympics has taken place since 98, when uh, when the U.S. won its first gold medal in the women's uh, ice hockey, uh, the following year, the following 15, 18 months, you've seen a real spike in uh, you know, more girls getting involved uh, in, in ice hockey all throughout the country. And uh, this should be no different. Obviously, it's prime time for uh, you know, the viewers, if they like ice hockey, they're going to be tuned in uh, Wednesday night. Uh, if they don't like hockey and they want to see a great event, uh, I'm sure a lot of people that normally won't watch a hockey game will watch a hockey game. And all of a sudden, if they have a, a daughter that all of a sudden has watched it or seen a replay of it, uh, they might come and wake up the next morning and ask mom or dad if I can go try skating. And, uh, you know, the spike in the, in the viewership uh, is, is very high. And our game gets exposed on the biggest platform that we can provide. So it, it's going to be a great night. Uh, I hope it's a great game and a lot of people get a chance to watch it. You can watch it. That's so much more than a fan, though, because you've seen all, so many of those players. I mean, do you, does that bring out pride in you that you've you've seen so many of them grow in the years they were here, that they were here and then since when they're at that level? Yeah, I think for, you know, for us that have, have touched them, uh, you know, here at Wisconsin, uh, it's – you know, behind the scenes, what they've had to do to, to work to get themselves in that position. And, you know, you look at each one of them, uh, their paths have been different. Uh, their paths have been, uh, you know, some adversity, some challenges, even this year with, uh, you know, a couple of the players, uh, you know, you look at Blair, Blair Turnbull and the injury she sustained earlier in the season. You look at Abby Rock and the couple injuries that she's had to go through. And uh, But now, now they're to the end. Uh, the light's at the end of the tunnel. This is a game that uh, they were both hoping for, and now they're going to get a chance to compete. And so uh, I'm excited for, uh, you know, both squads. It, it should be a great game. And, you know, if, if, if we're, you know, if, uh, you know both goaltenders, uh, you know, anticipate playing uh, are going to be both Badgers. So <laughs> one's going to be victorious and one's going to be sad. But uh, the end result is that, uh, you know, the people that get a chance to watch it live are going to see a great, great hockey game. Mark, you talked about the past that everybody's gone through, the former players. I mean, talking about Abby Rock and Sarah Nurse specifically, diverse faces in this game that's still growing. You know, what is how powerful do you think it is seeing those two out there? And can you kind of detail what, what they were both like here? Yeah, I mean, uh, both have uh, great stories. You look at Abby's background and what she's been able to expose the last couple of months. You look at what Sarah Nurse has done over the last probably two or three years. Uh, you look at what Hillary Knight's done as far as growing the game and, you know, being in an opportunity to uh, participate in her fourth Olympics, which is uh, not really easy to do. And so I look at it uh, with each of them and their stories and with the way they've been able to share that, uh, you know, whether it's throughout the United States, throughout Canada, or, or now the world. So it's uh, it's special. And, uh, you know, we touched them for a short period of time, and uh, yet we get to watch them uh, on the biggest platform that uh, sports can provide us. And for the women, uh, it, it's a goal of theirs, and uh, the end goal is to try to win a gold medal. So there's going to be one squad that's going to be real excited and happy after Wednesday night and the other one's obviously going to be disappointed but uh, you know as time goes on and each of them their contributions that they've made to women's hockey and help growing the sport and you know some uh, where in the near future somebody's going to want to be Hillary Knight someone's going to be Sarah Nurse someone's going to, going to want to be Abby Rock and so uh, they've done a great job and, and great ambassadors for our sport. Daryl said that She's got her mojo back now after maybe not having it early in the season. What have you seen from her in the last couple couple weeks? Well, if you're a goal scorer or point producer and you have a few good games back-to-back, -back, uh, especially with uh, scoring some goals, uh, 
you know, it's it's a fine line between going on the ice and feel really comfortable and confident and, and not. And so uh, if I score a couple goals or I make a couple big plays, you win a couple big games, uh, that helps with their mojo and certainly uh, what she was able to do this past weekend uh, help springboard her into this weekend against Columbus and into the playoffs. Speaking from experience, what are those couple days like as you're waiting for that gold medal game? And how do you not get in your head about it and realize, okay, this is about to be on the world's biggest stage? Yeah, I think, you know, to me, you know, have you prepared properly? And if, you know, they can really look themselves in the mirror, and I'm sure both teams have done a great job of it. You know, this is what they build up for. This is what they want to happen. And so it's just a matter of controlling your emotions and, uh, you know, being in the present. And uh, I've always talked about the biggest games is your ability to, Eliminate the outside distractions. Don't let anything get into your head uh, and try to play free. And so if I'm able to do that and I, I go on the ice not worrying about winning or losing and just playing my best game, generally you end up playing your best game. I know you, you guys have a travel day on Thursday. Are you just planning on staying up late Wednesday and watching the whole game and not having a lot of sleep? Yeah, it's, it's, well, it's past my bedtime, so it's uh, it'll be fun. Uh, you know, just get an opportunity like uh, so many other people. Uh, you know, you normally aren't going to be watching a hockey game on Wednesday night, but it's the Olympics. It's a gold medal game, so a lot of people are going to be tuned into it. When you play at Ohio State, the small building is often a factor. How do you account for that? What, what are the things you have to be be mindful of going into that? Well, you just, you know, awareness uh, of what what they're going to try to do and how they play in their building. And so through some videos, through some practicing, uh, you know, uh, up until we get there, an opportunity to skate in their building a couple different times. Uh, you hope that's enough, but it's actually when they drop the puck at six o'clock Friday and that first shift happens for each of our players and they'll get a real understanding of what we're talking about uh, live because uh, they'll play aggressive. Uh, they'll try to forecheck you with a lot of speed and aggression and you know how we're going to react in those first couple of shifts. After the first couple of shifts, you get an understanding and a feel what, what it's all about. And then it just a manager managing the puck that first 10 minutes. If you do a good job of managing the puck in those first 10 minutes, uh, maybe get some offensive time, the game will settle into itself. I know that will be an emphasis for you, especially after the last three weeks, yep. the first 10 minutes, the first couple of minutes, probably, especially yep. on Friday. That's what we're trying to teach. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> hopefully it's sinking in and uh, it's going to be good. I mean, it's, these are great, you know, uh, six periods for us as we prepare for the following weekend and our first round of our playoffs. Uh, and I think one of the reasons our league's been successful in the playoffs and the NCAA tournament is because, you know, we're playing these high quality games and whether it's in your building or in their building, you know, and you spend the last three or four weekends doing that and then you get into, you know, the NCAA tournament, uh, you know, you're ready to go. Uh, if you can stay away from injuries, uh, you're probably playing the best hockey that you were capable of playing uh, at the right time and then it's just a matter of going and ceasing your opportunities.